Hi guys! Today's topic is about national differences, in specific, differences in culture. There are three learning objectives in this topic, and I hope that by the end of this topic, you should be able to First, explain what is meant by the culture of a society. Second, identify the forces that lead to differences in social culture. And third, identify the business and economic implication of differences in culture. So, what is culture? According to Hofstede, the father of culture, culture refers to the collective programming of the mind which distinguishes the members of one human group from another. And according to other cultural researchers, culture refers to a system of values and norms that are shared among a group of people and that when taken together constitute a design for living. The similarities between these two definitions are the emphasis on the behavior of a group of people. Therefore, culture is not an individual construct, but it is a society construct. In addition to culture, we also have subcultures, which refer to a group of people who share a unique way of life within a larger dominant culture. For example, a dominant culture is our own national culture, Malaysia culture. And the Malaysia culture consists of subcultures such as the Malay culture, the Chinese culture, the Indian culture, and the indigenous people Bumiputra culture. Thus far, we have understood what is meant by the term culture. So, why do we need to study culture? First, to avoid ethnocentricity which refer to the belief that one group culture is superior to others. Ethnocentricity could lead to business failure by thinking that own culture is the right way of doing things. Thanks to the advancement of technological, we able to easily socialize with people from different cultural backgrounds. Thus, able to learn the rules and behavioral patterns appropriate to one society. Second, to develop cross-cultural literacy. When we are cultural literate, we can work happily and effectively because we know why people from different culture and background behave or think in certain ways. Instead of making the differences as barriers, we should embrace the differences and make the differences as our uniqueness, which improve the ability to market products, conduct business, and manage employees in other countries. Both the words values and norms are defined in culture. By values, we mean idea about what a group of people believes to be good, right, and desirable. Put differently, values are shared assumptions about how things ought to be. By norms, we mean the social rules and guidelines that prescribe appropriate behavior in particular situation. Values form the bedrock of a culture. Values provide the context within which a society norms are established and justified. They may include a society attitudes towards such concepts as individual freedom, truth, justice, honesty, loyalty, social obligation, collective responsibility, women, love, 
sex, marriage, and so on. Values are not just abstract concepts. They are invested with considerable emotional significance. People argue, fight, or even die over values, such as freedom. For norms, norms are the social rules that govern people's actions toward one another. These norms can be divided into two major categories, four ways and morals. Four ways are the routine conventions of everyday life. Generally, four ways are action of little moral significance. An example of four ways that perhaps is not immediately thought of as a culture issue is people's attitude toward time. People are very aware of what time it is, the passage of time, and the importance of time in, for example, the United States and the Northern European cultures, such as Germany, Netherlands, and the Scandinavian countries. In these cultures, business people are very conscious about scheduling their time and are quickly irritated when time is wasted because a business associate is late for a meeting of if they are kept waiting. Time is really money in the mind of these business people. However, in the opposite of the time-conscious Americans, German, Dutch, and Scandinavians, business people in many Arabic, Latin, and African cultures view time as more elastic. Keeping to a schedule is viewed as less important than building a relationship or finishing an interaction with people. Morals is a term that refers to norms that are more widely observed, have greater moral significance than other norms, and are central to the functionings of a society and to its social life. This means that morals have much greater significance than folk ways. In the United States, for example, Drinking alcohol is widely accepted, whereas in Saudi Arabia, the consumption of alcohol is viewed as violating important social mores and is punishable by imprisonment. Okay, we have defined culture earlier, and now let's see what is society and the nation state. Society refers to a group of people who share a common set of values and norms. That is, people who are bound together by a common culture. There is not a strict one-to-one -one correspondence between a society and a nation-state. Nation-states are political creation, and they may contain a single culture or several subcultures. For example, the nation of Canada has at least three cultures, an Anglo culture, a French-speaking culture, and a Native American culture. Cultures can also embrace several nations, such as the Scandinavian countries of Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. The values and norms of a culture do not emerge fully formed. They evolve over time in response to a number of factors, including prevailing political and economic philosophies, the social structure of a society, and the dominant religion, language, and education as shown in this image. However, the political and economic philosophy will be discussed in our next topic.
The society social structure refers to its basic social organization. In essence, we are talking about how a society is organized in terms of its values, norms, and the relationship that are part of the society fabric. How society operates and treats each other as people, groups, companies, and so on is both emergent from and a determinant of the behaviors of individuals in the specific society. Although the social structure consists of many different aspects, two dimensions are particularly important when explaining differences among culture. The first is the degree to which the basic unit of a social organization is the individual as opposed to the group or even company for which a person works. In general, Western societies tend to emphasize the importance of the individual, whereas groups tend to figure much larger in many other societies, such as the Japanese society, the Chinese society, and also the Arabic society. The second dimension is the degree to which societies are stratified or categorized into classes or castes and whether people have the social mobility which allowed them to move up or down in between the level as shown in the pyramid diagram. Social mobility varies significantly from society to society. The most rigid system of stratification is a caste system. A caste system is a closed system of stratification in which social position is determined by the family into which a person is born. And change in that position is usually not possible during an individual lifetime. However, a class system in comparison to caste system is a less rigid form of social stratification in which social mobility is possible. It is a form of open stratification in which the position of a person has by birth can be changed through his or her own achievement or luck. Individuals born into a class at the bottom of the hierarchy or pyramid can work their way up. Conversely, individuals born into a class at the top of the hierarchy can slip down from their top level to the bottom level of pyramid. Religion may be defined as a system of shared belief and ritual that are concerned with the realm of the sacred. Among the thousands of religions in the world today, four dominate in terms of number of adherents. First, we have Christianity, second, Islam, third, Hinduism, and fourth, Buddhism. Religion plays important role in doing business both domestically and internationally. For example, in the Islam religion, it has the requirement for halal food dietary. Therefore, fast food restaurant which commonly and normally originally from the U.S., has to adapt their menu in Islamic countries in order to get acceptance by the government and also the people. Language is one defining characteristic of a culture. It has both spoken and unspoken dimensions. In countries with more than one spoken language, we tend to find more than one culture just like Malaysia. In international business context, English is the main medium of communication. 
Non-spoken language, or also known as non-verbal communication, refers to the use of non-verbal cues to communicate meaning. The rising of eyebrows, for example, is a sign of recognition in most cultures, while a smile is a sign of joy. Many non-verbal cues, however, are culturally bound. A failure to understand the non-verbal cues of another culture can lead to a major communication failure. Here, Let's see some examples of non-verbal language, which have different meanings in different countries. Of considerable importance for an international business with operation in different countries is how a society culture affects the values found in the workplace. Management process and practices may need to vary according to the cultural determined work-related values. For example, if the culture of the United States and France result in different work-related values, an international business with operation in both countries should vary its management process and practices to account for these differences. Hofstede proposed four dimensions that he claims summarize different cultures. That are power distance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, and uncertainty avoidance. Hofstede's power distance dimension focus on how societies deal with the fact that People are unequal in physical and intellectual capabilities. According to Hofstad, high power distant cultures were found in countries such as the Philippines, Mexico, Venezuela, India, Brazil, and others, which they let inequalities grow over time into inequalities of power and wealth. Low power distant cultures were found in societies such as Australia, Israel, Denmark, and Sweden that try to play down such inequalities as much as possible. Next, we have the individualism versus collectivism dimension. This dimension focuses on the relationship between the individual and his or her fellows. In individualistic societies, the ties between individuals were loose and individual achievement and freedom were highly valued. In society where collectivism were emphasized, the ties between individuals were tight. In such society, people were born into collective, such as extended families, and everyone supposed to look after the interests of his or her collective. Examples of individualistic societies are the United States, Australia, Great Britain, Canada, and the Netherlands, whereas collectivistic societies are Venezuela, Colombia, Mexico, Taiwan, and Greece. Hofstede masculinity versus femininity dimension look at the relationship between gender and work roles. In masculine culture, sex roles were sharply differentiated and traditional masculine values such as achievement and the effective exercise of power determine cultural ideas. In feminine culture, Sex roles were less sharply distinguished, and little differentiation was made between men and women in the same job. So the examples of feminine society are Sweden, Denmark, Thailand, Finland, and Yugoslavia, whereas Japan, Australia, Venezuela, Italy, and Mexico are the examples of masculine society.
How's that uncertainty avoidance dimension measure the extent to which different cultures socialize their members into accepting ambiguous situation and tolerating uncertainty? Members of high uncertainty avoidance culture place a premium on job security, career patterns, retirement benefits, and so on. They also had a strong need for rules and regulation. The manager was expected to issue clear instruction and subordinates' initiative were tightly controlled. However, low uncertainty avoidance culture were characterized by a greater readiness to take risks and less emotional resistance to change. First, we have the finger cross signs. In the United States, it means hoping for good luck. In Vietnam, it is thought to resemble female genitals and is similar to giving the middle finger. So, it has a totally opposite meaning than the one in America. Next, we have the rock sign. In the United States, it is usually used by rockers. When the index and pinky are raised, it is a sign of approval or rock on. However, in other countries such as Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Cuba, Spain, Italy, and Portugal, this sign is made as someone to tell them that their spouse, husband or wife is cheating on them. Next, the common sign of OK. In the United States, it just simply means OK. However, in Japan, it means money. In Brazil, this is a bad or rude gesture. Don't make the same mistake as Richard Nixon, who visited Brazil and flashed the OK sign to a waiting crowd, but was responded to with boos. He was boos by the crowd. And the last example, we have the come here gesture. In America, in Ecuador, or even in Malaysia, this is a normal come here gesture. This gesture is also used when seducing someone. But in the Philippines, it's only used to call a dog. So it is derogatory to use on people, and you could get arrested for using it. So bear in mind not to use this gesture in the Philippines. And for the last determinants of culture in today's discussion, formal education. Formal education is the medium through which individuals learn knowledge and skill as well as become socialized into the values and norms of a society. Education plays an important role in the determination of national competitive advantage. And values and norms are taught both directly and indirectly through the medium of education. Now, let us see how culture influences on international business. First, culture influences on how we sell our product due to differences in taste and preferences. For example, McDonald's. McDonald's creates special menu according to the taste and preferences in specific countries. So we can see here, in Malaysia, we have nasi lemak burger, as nasi lemak is our national menu. Liked by not only Malays but also Indian and Chinese. 
in Japan, because the Japanese like sashimi, they have AB or prawn burger. And in most Western countries, they serve beers in the McDonald's restaurant. They are not limited to the foods only because advertisements are also made and developed according to the taste and preferences in specific countries. In Singapore, KFC used the tagline So Shop. In Malaysia, as a Muslim country, KFC emphasized the halal certification in the advertisement. And also, we Malaysians tend to change the spelling and pronunciation in our own style. And McDonald took notice and also named certain McDonald outlets as McD. In China, Coca-Cola has named their brand to read them as Chinese words, Coca-Cola, which means tasty and fun. Next, different countries also have different ways of communication, interaction and social relationship and position. Some countries prefer to shake hands, whereas some prefer to just bow their head. However, different degree of head bowing means different thing. Usually, the slight bow is for everyone, whereas respectful bow, the 45 degree bows, reserved to someone with higher status and rank. And for handshake, although it is common, but it is not for female in the Islam religion. It is prohibited to handshake with the opposite gender, which are not their spouse or family. So we can see in this picture, Prince William didn't handshake with the ladies because he knew that no touching is allowed. It seems that based on this simple example, we would expect companies to know the importance of culture. Yet, most companies fail in international business due to lack of understanding of the significant culture differences between on-home market with host market. Even well-established companies which have been doing international business for so long also made mistakes in their strategies. Here are some of it. One of the classic examples is Nike. In 1997, Nike released the Air Bekin, a basketball sneaker that featured a generic, flame-like design that resemble the word Allah when written in Arabic script. It anger Muslim because it show disrespectful. So, Muslim boycott against Nike product worldwide. Nike eventually recalled 38,000 pairs of the shoes and apologies to the Muslim community. Another example is not on the product itself, but on the promotional aspect, the advertisement aspect. Rihanna is facing a lot of backlash from Muslim Twitter users across the world over one of her recent Savage X Fenty 2020 fashion show. The singer is being accused of disrespecting the values of Islam and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, due to a song that was used during her fashion show. The song reportedly was a sample vocals of a hadith being read in Arabic. In 2013, Nike made a mistake again when it designed women's sport gears inspired by traditional Samoan tattoo, which is reserved only for men. 
Some are unhappy about the use of the design, which are viewed as sacred. In 2015, Pringles made mistake by promoting its product, smoked bacon flavor potato chips, and associated it with Ramadan Mubarak, which the Muslim do not consume pork-based product. This shows insensitive. Two well-known products, which are Fair and Lovely and Dove, made similar mistakes in promoting their products. Both advertisements were accused of being racially insensitive. Beauty should be promoted regardless of sizes, shapes, and colors. Yet the message of both advertisements show that beauty was only presented by being fair in color and complexions. The advertisement was criticized because many people interpreted a black woman changing into a white woman to be an inappropriate message, especially for a beauty company. A good message in terms of beauty should embrace the diversity of culture, belief, and norms. This was shown by a good example of the L'Oreal Beauty Company, which promotes that beauty comes in all shapes and shades as well, as well beyond gender and ages. They include both male model, hijabi model, and many more as part of their campaign. Therefore, we can see from this example that it is important to understand cultural differences in order to ensure we can do international business effectively and efficiently. So, that's all for now. Thank you and see you in the next topic. Bye!